In this video, we will demonstrate how to replace the elements in an L and L electric kiln. When ordering new elements, contact L and L or your local distributor. Provide them with your kiln's model number, serial number, voltage, and phase, all of which can be found on the kiln's nameplate, typically located on the control panel. This step is essential to ensure you receive the correct elements for your kiln. In addition to new elements, you may want to consider getting new terminal hardware, as these can corrode over time, even though we use stainless steel. At L&L, we pride ourselves on making our kilns easy to maintain. Replacing elements in L&L &L kilns is simple, easy, and quick. The only tools required are a screwdriver, a wrench, needle nose pliers, and wire cutters. No crimpers or wire strippers are needed, and no element pins are necessary. Before performing any maintenance, always make sure your kiln is unplugged or the circuit breaker is turned off. To access the element connections, you must first open the element box mounted on the side of the kiln. To do this on most of our polygonal kilns, you would start by removing these two upper screws to open the outer control panel. Once opened, disconnect the thermocouple and power wires from the terminal strips. You only need to disconnect the wires that lead into the element box. Make sure you take pictures as you go so you can put everything back in the proper order. Once these wires are disconnected, you can remove the screws from the right-hand side of the element box, allowing it to swing open. Here, you will find the ceramic element terminal blocks. Their exact configuration may differ depending on the model of your kiln. In this example, we are changing the elements in an E18 M-3 kiln. This model has two standard terminal blocks with parallel wiring, the most common configuration, as well as an M-ring with an M-series terminal block. If your kiln has a different configuration, be sure to check our website for the appropriate wiring diagrams, which we have linked in the description. Remove the nuts, power wires, washers, and element tails from the terminal bolts. It's a good idea to photograph them and keep them in the correct order. The last washer and nut, fastening the bolt to the terminal block, can remain in place if they are in good condition. If they also need to be replaced, you would need to remove the terminal blocks. Straighten the element tails and clip off the ends so they can slide through the kiln wall for removal. Remove the old element coils from the inside of the kiln. As long as the element holders are intact and the elements weren't fired beyond their lifespan, the elements should come out with ease. With the elements removed, it is now an opportune time to vacuum out the holders of any dust or debris. Once clean, make sure the element holders are spaced evenly. Besides a few exceptions, such as our Schoolmaster line, most L&L &L kilns will use identical elements throughout, so you don't need to worry about installing them in a specific order. The description on the website of each element will alert you if this is the case. When installing the new elements, insert one element tail through the kiln wall and terminal block. Feed the element coils into the holders, working your way around the kiln. No pins are needed. Sometimes, elements can compress during shipping and might be too short to reach the other end. If that is the case, stretch out the element until it is the correct length. It is better to gently stretch out large sections of the element instead of aggressively stretching a small section, which could lead to deformation. Insert the other end of the element through the kiln wall and terminal block. Ensure the element is securely seated in the holders and not popping out of any corners. If an element won't stay seated in the corner, stretch it a little more so there's less tension. Repeat this process with the rest of the elements. Once the elements are in place, you can reconnect them to the terminal bolts. Use needle nose pliers to bend the ends of the elements towards the bolts without putting pressure on the terminal block. 
Be sure to put the hardware on in the correct order. For a standard terminal block with parallel wiring, the proper hardware order will be a washer, a hex nut, a second washer, the top element, a third washer, the bottom element, a fourth washer, the power wire, and a final hex nut. You want each element sandwiched between two washers. When you wrap the elements around the bolt, you should wrap them tightly, only halfway around, making a U-shape. This ensures that they remain flat and make complete contact with the washers. You do not want to wrap them all the way around, having the elements overlap. This will create a gap and prevent full contact with the washers and the element tail. Tighten the final hex nut to ensure everything is making proper contact. Repeat this process with every terminal bolt. Once they are all connected and tightened, you can clip off any excess element wire. Close the element box and be sure to pull out any slack from the thermocouple and power wires. Reattach the element box to the side of the kiln and reattach the thermocouple and power wires in the control panel. You have successfully replaced your kiln's elements. We recommend running a glaze program to Kono 4 at medium speed. This is to ensure everything is working correctly and to form a protective oxide layer on the elements. Make sure to load the kiln with shelves and furniture to help with heat distribution. For more kiln maintenance, repairs, and tutorials, be sure to visit L&L's website at hotkilns.com.